All right, guys, so this is going to be a little bit lengthy video, but this is me going to try and catch up with some of the comments, try and connect with you guys, and talk about what's going on. Uh, first and foremost, Catch a Vet Tournament coming up this weekend. Uh, if you have the opportunity to get out there and fish it, come out Saturday, fish it. There's going to be a dinner afterwards. It's a good cause. Um, it, it's a great tournament, great guys, and I'll be there as long with several of my other friends fishing it too. So if you want to come out and fish a ter charity tournament for a good cause, come fish the Catch a Vet. Uh, also, if you're looking to fish the Eldon Bassmasters um, Club, we're having another tournament this Sunday. Uh, we're having a meeting tonight, so you're more than welcome to come check us out, see if it's something you'd enjoy, see if it's a club that you could partake in and feel like you could be a member. And other than that, let's just start uh, talking about some comments here and let's get caught up on things. Um, the first one, and the most recent one, is Table Rock Lake. Uh, was that braid with a leader for the top water? Question mark. If so, how do you like it? Question mark. Been doing that on spinning reels for a while, but never on bait casters. Okay, well, first off, I like throwing a heavy, heavy leader when I throw a top water for the reason that I'm going to show you in just a second. All right, so to answer your question, this is why I throw a heavy leader, and why heavy, I mean a 17 to 20 pound monofilament leader to a 10 to 15 pound braid. I know that seems very contradictory to what you should be doing. Normally you throw a heavier braid to a lighter leader, but when it comes to throwing these top waters where you're tying directly to the bait, even though you might cinch down the braid on the front, on the loop, it doesn't necessarily fix the biggest problem that you have with throwing braid. And if you guys throw braid with crankbaits, you know this happens quite often, but other than actually tying a line straight to a crankbait where you kill your action, um, a topwater, you don't really worry about the action because you can still walk it, you can still pop it, you don't have to worry about anything. But if you take note on how limp that line is, and what happens a lot of times when you cast, is the line is so limp that it will constantly catch in your hooks. And to avoid that, let me show you. All right, so I got the leader tied onto the braid, tied directly to the bait, and this is a little chug bug. And if you notice, when I turn this vertical, see how much farther away the line stays from the bait? And that eliminates this front hook from getting wrapped in the line a whole lot more often than if you're using braid. Um, I like casting with braid. Braid casts much farther and you can feel a lot more bites and you can be a little bit quicker because when that fish takes it there's no stretch or anything you have to be a little bit softer on your hook sets but you can tell right away when that fish has actually grabbed the bait and by doing that you no longer get hung up as much using um, a straight braid to your popper and it's just added security if you fish over a cable or something if you leave about three or four foot leader if you cast up over a cable behind a dock or under a walkway or something you can work that you, fish will hit it you can work it all the way back and get that heavier line up on the cable and kind of hold the fish there and that'll allow you to actually have more confidence in casting over cables because throwing a 10 or 12 pound braid or you can throw this on 65 if you want I just think that's kind of overkill um, most of the rods that I use top water on are also my crankbait rods so I like having a versatile line already spooled up so it's either 10 or 15 pound braid. So that answers that question. Let's move to the next one. All right, Bill, I actually replied to this one. Nick, have you tried the THKO wake bait? Um, Bill, I have not. I don't have confidence in wake baits. It's just something I haven't built confidence in really square bills and wake baits. Those are just two baits I haven't really tried that often. Um, all right, who's your back, OD? Very nice evening. Yes, it, it was a very nice evening and those gar are strange and prehistoric. Yes, gar are very strange looking fish, but don't underestimate how strong they are. If you catch one, don't let the size fool you. That little guy right there, when I was taking that hook out in that video, um, I had a death grip. I mean, the hardest grip I could on him. And as soon as I pulled that hook out, they have so much strength because that whole body is nothing but a piece of muscle. And that's why as soon as I put that hook out, I just threw them. Um, because they will, and if their teeth grab your hand, they will rip your hand open in no time. Um, Fred, any uh, any word on rental boat? Uh, any idea what your rates may be? Actually, Fred, I replied to you on here, but I'll reply to you again up here. 
Um, yes, I am all set. Rental business is up and going. I have one uh, one boat, and it's a fully rigged bass boat. So it, it's for that niche. If you're a person that wants a bass boat to go out and experience um, a bass fishing uh, experience such as a tournament, what a tournament angler goes through on a day-to-day -day basis, and have the equipment without having to go buy a boat to experience this. That's what I'm offering. Uh, the rates is just going to be a flat $350 for a full day, which is nine hours, and then $250 for a five-hour day. So if you're interested in something like that, just get a hold of me. Let me know. Um, anybody can do it as long as you have your boater certificate. Um, boater safety certificate. You have to have that if you're required by law to have it. Otherwise, you can't you can't rent the boat. Um, but if you're interested, just get a hold of me. You can find me on Facebook or on here. I thought 15 for any bass was across the board for any bass in Missouri. Is Lake of the Ozarks different? Uh, Trey at Table Rock. Let me tell you something, Trey. Uh, I know I commented on this, but this might help a lot of other people that are watching. Uh, Lake of the Ozarks has three different species of fish and I guess um, the biggest thing is Kentucky's only have to be 12 largemouth and smallmouth have to be 15 now when you go to different lakes there are different lake length limits for different fish species and like uh, Palm de Terre is a 13 inch length limit and you know and they change them depending on what the population of the lake so if you go to one lake and one year the population is really bad they might change the length limit to instead of 15 inches to 12 inches just to help the you know st stop stunting the growth because if you leave a hundred 12 inch fish in a pond there's not going to be enough bait or food for the couple of big ones that are in there so you have to take out the little ones to get allow the other ones to grow so that answers that question again Trey at Table Rock what is your thoughts on pulling a big bass off of beds to take in, take to weigh in I fish Table Rock most ex almost exclusively, and I hate that so many tournaments go on during the spawn. I think a big bass with good genetics should be left, but so many guys will not hesitate when money is involved. I can respect you for catching them, throwing and or for catching them, throwing them back when you knew you were out of the money. You know, you're absolutely right, Trey. Uh, I, I feel that if you really think about the number of fish that are pulled from all over the lake and relocated to certain weigh-in areas, I absolutely believe that kills um, the breeding process for the entire lake. I don't think it hurts the fish as far as breeding because they're still going to lay their eggs. They're still going to go find somewhere to spawn. But you have now then concentrated all these fish in one area, and that's where all these fish are going to grow. And that's why here at Lake the Ozarks, PV2 is such a popular area, especially when all these fish are brought back during the spawn and then they go out and they swim maybe two miles, maybe three before they'll spawn because it's so close to spawn time they just want to lay their eggs and move on with their life. So yes, it definitely hurts the uh, growth of fish across the lake. Does it hurt the spawn? Not so much. I think it just concentrates the fish into a certain part of the lake more over which is why I wish there were more places to actually host tournaments and I wish some of these other tournaments would go out a different location such as Shawnee Bend boat ramp or Gravois access both of those ramps a the Gravois and Shawnee Bend both free and tons of parking at both of them I mean absolutely tons of parking I bet you gravel you could probably park a hundred plus boats there no problem um, but nonetheless it's always PB2 because that's just the populated side of the lake how do you sign up for the kids fishing tournament? Okay, so I mentioned this in a previous video. Um, the Eldon Bassmasters do a kids fishing tournament uh, the day before Father's Day, which will be May 16th this year, or June 16th this year. And it's it's there's no sign up or anything. If you're interested in fishing it with your kids, all you have to do is show up and you register right then and there, and you just find the spot that you want to fish. It's just around a little pond. It's nothing fancy, you know, it's just, it's something for the kids. So it, it's just a nice, nice little thing that we do every year just to get the kids involved in fishing. So if that's something you're interested in, again, comment down below, say you're interested, and I'll try and message you or contact me on Facebook or message me on YouTube, and I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, Andy Abram, do you have to have a boat for the kids tournament? Because I'm going to show this to my daughter, 
and she's going to ask if we can fish it. I'm going to have to tell her no because we don't have a boat, which she understands that. Next year, hopefully, I will have one, and then, boy, am I going to fish my rear all. <laughs> well, Andy, having a boat definitely helps getting on the water and fishing more, and it makes it more desirable because going to the bank and fishing the same spot over and over can get repetitive and monotonous and boring, but nonetheless, you do not need a boat for this. This is a bank fishing around a small lake and just just for the kids so you're more than welcome to come if you don't want to be cut off by the damn lake nobody is wrong <laughs> that's great so let, let, let's just be clear on one thing guys I, there are a ton of comments on the video where I was talking about the guy threatening me after it, um, he cut me off and first things first it's nothing about the rules. I know what the rules are. You don't have to explain it to me. There's a lot of comments that are, well, does he break the rules? Do you have an anchor down? It's common courtesy. And it kind of hurts my feelings that there's this many people in the world that probably don't give a crap. They could care less if you're catching 100 fish. They're going to pull right up next to you, and they're going to fish right next to you. And I think that's just, it's a shame. Because, you know what? Common decency is, is all you have to have to be a decent person and not have conflicts like this. You know, the guy cut me off, as simple as that. I had in my mind how I was gonna edit my video and I was raised to kill him with kindness and you can see that in day one of the Big Bass Bash. You can see exactly how I had originally planned on editing it, but he decided to go off the deep end and start yelling and cussing at me and that's why I just decided to make its own video. So, nonetheless, it's the uh, most viewed video I've had so far, so you guys, spread the hate or share the love and I understand you guys uh some of you guys sided with me some of you guys were against it you said I was in the wrong which hey whatever you know if you think me just fishing down the bank not cutting somebody off is wrong you well, that's your problem not mine I don't really care um, I just know that I'm not that guy I'm not gonna cut if you're fishing a spot I'm not gonna cut you off that's just that simple I don't care what what money is on the line or whatever I will pull in behind you and wait for you to go by especially if you're moving pretty quick like I was so I'm not gonna sweat that one so I just wanted to clear the air on that great video Nick I've been slabbing myself hey that's fishing with Norby hey guys if you if you want to check out another good YouTube channel also check out fishing with Norby uh, he does a lot of really good videos and he had a whole winter series of uh, ice fishing and I met him uh, practicing for the Costa event last fall and he's just a great guy, good channel. Feel free to go check him out, without a doubt. Uh, Moo Moo Outdoors, you guys are eating good on the water. Yes, yes, absolutely, we are. There's no doubt about it, catching tons of crappie. Now, JLNTV, is that Ray Larson? And he was uh, referring to the BFL Super Tournament last fall. And I answered his question, yes, it was. Uh, Ray and I had an awesome time out on the water. And I think he ended up going out and taking third in that super tournament on the co-angler side. And um, absolutely great guy to fish with. And I hope I end up getting an opportunity to fish with him when I get some free time or uh, if he ends up being my co-angler. We can get out there and have a really good time fishing on the water. SB Higgs 5. Hoping to crappie fish this weekend. What brand and color of jig do you recommend? Well, it depends on the time of year. And unfortunately, I'm getting to this a little bit later. Um... I suggest either a Bobby Garland Threadfin Shad or a um, just a regular Curly Tail Grub. I like June Bug with a Curly Tail Grub. Um, both of those work really good and I either throw a um, 16th ounce or an 8th ounce. Those are the two that I throw. I don't really worry about going anything other than that because when I crappie fish I go for fun. I'm not out there to try and stress my brain and figure out exactly how fast they want the rate of fall or anything like that. Who's your back OD? Flipping them slabs. Very nice. Been killing myself. You know, I'm glad you're out there catching them too. Uh, it's just crappie fishing this year has been phenomenal. Fred1975. I have a five year old son who'd love to start off a good tackle box. Uh, unfortunately, Fred, you know, I'd love to be able to give every person um, giveaways, but um, Brent Bean was the winner on that one. So maybe next time, or uh, maybe if I see you guys out on the water. Or something. If you see me on my out on the water, get a hold of me, flag me down, say hey, what's up? Um, I'd be more than happy to give him a couple of my personal lures just to start his own uh, start his own little tackle boxes. You know, that, that's just a cool way to get kids involved. 
Matt Cruz, great videos. Happy to see someone on the home uh, lake. Glad to see I'm not the only one struggling at the lake. But if you do get some more bed fish, white jigs, and creature baits, uh, got them biting on Sunday. You know, Matt, you're right. Um, that's one of my favorite things to throw is either white or bright yellow uh, lizards or creature baits or jigs, like um, a swim jig. You flip a swim jig in there, it, it works just as good too. Um, but yeah, I have been struggling, and I know a lot of people have been struggling. I just don't know where to find some of these bigger fish this time of year. It's just I'm just glad they're starting to move to brush piles. That's all I can say. Okay, hey, if I saw you on the water and you said to me, said that to me, you'd be done. You'd be in the wrong, dude. Who the blank you think you are? If you honestly don't know what's wrong with you, Jesus, what a joke. You're a cocky little that never that's never been knocked out but believe me karma coming to you wow that guy is uh that's not a very positive person and he's referring to the the guy uh that cut me off see that that's one of those replies that i was talking about guys some of these people just don't get it they just don't get it um anyways the world's filled with negativity i refuse to be that type of person I'll fill it with positivity and smiles. So, to those guys, there's a smile for you. I have a nine year old son that's been fishing for a year now. He would love some new baits. Been watching you all the way from PA. Love the tips and tricks uh, we see through the videos. You know, Jeffrey, um, I appreciate you taking the time watching the videos. And um, actually, go ahead, go ahead and comment uh, or get a hold of me on Facebook or on YouTube. Send me a message. Um, but I'd like to talk to you about some of the fishing over there in uh, Pennsylvania. That would be uh, something interesting for me to learn because I, I hear there's um, some really good fishing up there, even though it's a limited season because of a little bit colder weather, but that would be interesting to learn about. So if you have some time and you'd like to share your information with me, I'd like to just sit and talk fishing with you. Scott William, I'm a 12-year-old boy. I like to go fishing like the Ozarks all the time with my dad. Well, Scott, if you're ever down at the lake, let me know because if I am available, I'd be more than happy to try and meet up with you and just sit and talk about fishing, answer some questions. And maybe maybe if you got some free time, maybe you and your dad or your parents can come out on the boat and we'll go catch some fish. All right, this one's from Nick Gallicolone. I think I pronounced that right. I'm not sure. Nice video. I love backwater jacks. Any advice for getting stubborn fed fish to bite? Um, this was for the Fish for Sight tournament where I fished with Dane. And, um, you know, bed fishing, sight fishing is an art. It really is, and it takes practice and practice and practice, and it is something I still am not very uh, confident in saying I'm proficient at, but I do know that when a fish is locked on a bed, I can get it to bite. And when I start bed fishing, when I start looking for fish on beds, I have one entire side of my boat, um, all the rods on one side of my boat are various different baits just for bed fishing, and I have a cup holder filled with other baits that once I've gone through those, I'll start tying on other ones on a fish. Because I feel that I, if you spend more than 20 minutes on a fish and it hasn't bit yet, unless it is something really good like a 5 or 6 pounder, I move on. Because you have to get to the point where that fish is agitated enough to actually bite. And if you're not getting the reaction that you need out of them, then you you could be wasting a lot of time trying to catch that one fish, and um, yeah, that's just something that's something it, it you just gotta feel that fish out. And it looks like there's a reply to that old guy on a Harley. <laughs> we we used the purple Yamamoto Cinco's hooked wacky style, using the O-rings on spinning reels. Skip them behind the docks under the cables, also the watermelon color. He's absolutely right. Um, throwing a little Cinco around beds, blind fishing behind docks will produce big fish because that's where those fish will spawn. They like to spawn behind the docks where they're protected. Chris Hemstad. Uh, <laughs> hey Chris, how you doing? Um, not even close to being a kid, but I wanted to comment on the great guy and great giveaway. Awesome stuff, bud. Thank you, Chris. Um, I appreciate the kind words and um, I try. You know, I, my goal is always get people involved in the sport and it's enjoyable. Alright guys, so I'm going to wrap up this video. It could be much, much longer, but I just wanted to reply to some of the comments, and I appreciate your responses, and I try to get back to you as soon as I can, but 
with all the replies, especially ever since that um, that guy that cut me off video, uh, just so many. That is my most disliked video to date, yet it's also my most viewed video. It blows my mind to see how many people are saying I'm in the wrong and how many people say I wasn't doing anything wrong. I, I mean, it's just one of those things. Look, in hindsight, yeah, I could see how it came off a little, you know, passive aggressive but that definitely wasn't my intention if you watch the big bass bash day one video you'll see how i planned on editing the video just when he flipped his lid yeah screw it i'll put that in the video i just tried to give the guy an opportunity to say hey listen i'm sorry you're right you know i did cut you off i'm in the wrong um but i i, I won't do it again you know something like that that's all i was looking for but now he flipped his lid and got mad so whatever it's in the past so Anyways, so let's talk about what's going on this weekend. Um, this past weekend was Mother's Day. Hopefully you guys had all a uh, good time with your moms and were able to at least celebrate somehow. Second off, uh, the fish are all spawning. Everything's spawning. Bluegill, bass, crappie, gar, uh, carp, they're all spawning. Uh, in, I went into a little pocket. Inside this pocket, on one side of the pocket was nothing but crappie. On the other side of the pocket, which is only 30 feet, maybe 40 feet away, was four or five bass on beds. And then in the very, very, very back in the shallows of this pocket were tons of bluegill spawning. I mean, there's just beds everywhere. And at the mouth of the pocket were the gar, and, and some of the carp were in the back too. But uh, the mouth of the pocket was just filled with gar. So everything's spawning. Um, hopefully that doesn't make a big difference in the catch a vet tournament this weekend. And if you guys can, the catch a vet tournament is a great tournament. It, uh, proceeds go to uh, veterans and taking care of our vets. And Sunday I'm fishing the Elden Bassmasters down in Palm de Terre. So hopefully we just have a good weekend. And nonetheless, you guys have an awesome day. And hopefully, um, hopefully this builds a community between us. Uh, I, I, I hate not being able to reply, but between working a full-time job, trying to fish, and then spending almost 30 hours a week editing video, I just don't have time to sit down and reply. So I thought I'd take a minute, stop, talk to you guys, and connect. So enjoy yourselves, have an awesome day, and get out there and catch fish.